Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a first person shooter in Unity and welcome to episode 2. In this tutorial we're going to bring in some textures, we're going to create some materials and we're going to explore what else we can do in our scene. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So up to now we have this nice and simple cube which we're going to use as a floor. We're going to apply a material and a texture to this to at least make it look better than just a big white square. Um, but to do that we need to bring in a texture first. So down here in our assets let's right click over here, let's go to create and let's go to folder. Now it's always good practice to keep everything neat and tidy whenever you're developing, so in this case let's have a folder specifically designed to hold all our textures. So let's call it textures. And all a texture really is, is an image that can be applied to a material which can then be applied to objects within our scene. So I'm going to drag and drop two textures into this section here from this folder. And you can get these two textures from my website, which is in the description of the video. If you head over there, go to Downloads and Assets, go to the new First Person Shooter series, you can download them there under tutorial number two. It's also worth noting that you will have to unzip the file first. You won't be able to drag over assets from a zipped folder into Unity. So just unzip, drag and drop, and you're good to go. Now, what do we do with these two textures? How do we get them on here? Well, there's a couple of different ways. The most simple way is to drag and drop a texture onto an object and everything will then automatically be created. So if we were to drag this tile, this floor tile onto here, like so, you would end up with a couple of things. You'd see that this texture is now, or appearing to be, on the object itself. However, a new folder has been created automatically called materials. And this material is what is actually on the object. You can tell that by clicking the object and looking down here, you can see there is a component called material. So what else can we do with this material? Well, it looks okay for now if we zoom in, but it looks a little flat. We can actually modify it a little bit to make it look more realistic, I suppose the, real, the right word might be. So let's make sure we are on this material You'll see it change over here in the inspect panel. This is now specifically for the material. We can change how it looks in its metallic view. So we can change it just a little bit and you'll see it change ever so slightly. So if you want to make it look more metally, is that a right word? Then you would change that. You can change the smoothness up or down here. You can also change the source from metallic to albedo. And again, I think it really depends on how you want your game to look. I always recommend people to kind of play around with some of these settings to get it looking exactly how they would want it to look. So going further down, there is something called normal map. What is a normal map? Well, a normal map is actually a way of making a two dimensional object, in this case, the cube, look a little more 3D. It uses light to kind of get inside cracks and changes things accordingly to make them look a little better. To create a normal map, we have to change one texture. So if we go back to our textures folder, click on tile 001, hold down the control button and press D. And what that will do is make a duplicate of that texture. And you can see it's now called it tile 001 space 1. Let's rename this. Let's rename it to tile 001 underscore n. And the n is just, uh, I guess it's just an initial to say normal map. So make sure we are on that. And over here, you'll see texture type. Let's change this from default to normal map. And we're not going to tick anything else here. We're just going to click apply and it will turn into a bluey gray color, especially if you are uh, using grayscale, but you can tell it is a normal map because if we look very slightly, we can see yellowish markings on there, and the white is a very faint purpley color now. Usually, this is a good indication that we have indeed created a normal map. So, if we go back to our material, and then on normal map, we can click this little radial button there, and then we can select tile 001 N and it will apply that normal map. And you can see that looks a little better than it did previously. 
it looks a little more realistic, but you can see just how the light changes when we move around. And it does indeed look a little more three-dimensional, even though it's still a two-dimensional object. Now, next thing I want to do is I want to apply uh, a bit more to this. I don't want it to be one big square like this. I want the texture itself to be replicated over and over, just to make them look smaller, but make it more like a larger floor. To do that, we can change the tiling down here. So we've got tiling of one here. You can change it to two by two. And what that will do is it will replicate that particular texture and now we have four versions of it. So two by two is four, which means we have four sections. If we were to change that back to one, we would have just two versions of it and it doesn't quite look right. I would usually recommend going with something um, at least in the two times table. I know that sounds very primitive again, but going five by five may cause not issues, but things may not align as nicely as they could do. I usually like to stick with something like four by four when creating a tiling effect on the floor. So if we go to our game view now, although we're not going to press play, we can see how that looks. There are a couple of things that we probably will need to change at some point when it comes to things like lighting, uh, but ultimately we've now created a floor which we'll be able to have our character on at a later date. So what else can we do? Well, let's create another object here. We imported that crate right there. So let's have this as another object. Let's have a crate over here somewhere. Let's create another cube. So game object, 3D object, cube. And let's initially put the position back to 0, 0, 0. So it is center of our screen. And let's change the scale to, let's have it as 2 by 2 by two, so it's slightly larger. Now what we're going to do is use the snap settings. What are the snap settings? Best way to describe them is it makes it easier to snap objects in certain increments. If we were to move this object up, so hold the left mouse button on the Y axis and drag it, you can see that we have moved it 0.83. That's not exact, is it? We want to get it round about there. I've managed to get it well, exact as it as it would seem, uh, but you could end up like that. It's just a, a little short or it's just a little much. Let's hold control and press Z to undo. Back to its original position. Snap settings help us get it exactly right. To do that, we go to edit and down the bottom, you've got grid and snap settings. I always like to have the size set as roughly 0.5. You could have it as 2.5. That's why I said roughly. Uh, but I think half is always good. So you can see the increment snap down here is 0.25 and the world grid is 0.5. Now, again, it's entirely up to you how you want to move this around. But when you select one, it will do all the rest as they are linked. Um, but for now, let's stick with our increment snap as 0.5. Hit the X and now if we hold control and try moving the Y axis up, you'll see over here it snaps it in increments of 0.5, like so. So let's place it on the ground. Now, once we have this here, let's apply a material to this object to make it more like a crate, but let's not use the same method we did before. Let's go to materials, let's right click, create, and down here you'll see material. Let's create the material from scratch. We'll say crate. And now what we can do is we can select this albedo option again and then select crate 001. And you'll see it has created it here and all we could do is drag and drop onto here. Now as I did that you'll notice it did it to there. Don't worry about that, as long as you still have the left mouse button held down, it's not going to stick to something. It's a preview of what it would look like. So let's make sure it is on there. Now what we can do is let's create another normal map. So let's click on here, hold control again and press D, and it will create a duplicate and let's rename it with an underscore N at the end. And much like we did with the other one, let's change the texture type to normal map. But let's also click create from grayscale. 
It gives you another option, but we'll leave that as it is for now and we'll press apply. And you can see that real purple color appear. This will give us a different visualization on the object itself rather than this normal map, which gave us this visualization. So let's click here and let's modify the material right down here in the object itself. Now it's worth noting that even if you change the material on the object itself, it will still change the material. So if it's attached to any other objects, they will also change. You are directly changing the material here. Let's drag and drop this normal map onto here instead of searching for it. And you can see it's changed. Let's double click on this cube here to zoom in and we can see that looks a little rough. But let's change our settings here to make it look a little less rough. Let's change the metallic to up very slightly. Let's reduce the smoothness. And let's change the normal map from 1 to 0 0.2. You can see that it does have a slight normal map look to it. It is slightly rough, but depending on how you play around with the normal map, you can change how it looks. You can hold your mouse over here, hold the left mouse button down, and move the numbers quite high, and you can see just how dramatically it can change. So let's have this, um, let's have it at 0.25. Oh, uh, do we need to have a tiling on this? No, I don't think so. I think having it as just a crate is good enough. Now, as I scroll around the back here, we can see that the effect is not quite applied as it is on the other sides. Remember what I said earlier about normal maps? Well, the lighting does truly affect how the normal map is. If we were to take this directional light and hold our mouse over either the X or Y and move it around, you can see how the light does change the object itself. So just keep that in mind whenever you are creating a normal map. I've just held control and press Z to undo there. So most of the time when creating a material, the easiest method is going to be drag and drop and then modify a little further on. If we go to our game view, we can see, yep, there's our crate. It all looks okay. At least we're creating something relative to what we want to do now. We have a floor, we have uh, a crate here already. Um, and what we'll do before we finish up is let's rename these so with they well, so we know what they are. Because if you have a massive hierarchy full of things that are just called cube or sphere or something like that, you don't really know what they are. So let's change the name of this one to be floor. And all I did there was just press F2 to rename. Well, you can indeed right click and click on rename. And let's just call this crate. So up to now, we're starting to create something which looks better than it did from the last tutorial. Uh, next time, what we're going to do is we're going to bring in some more textures. I want to create um, a bit more to this. I want uh, some walls. I want it to maybe be some kind of room that we can play in. And we're also going to start looking a little bit at some basic physics. Physics are important in game design. And I think the sooner we kind of understand what causes the physics to work in Unity, the better. So until that next tutorial, thank you very much for watching.